All right, I'm going to be making my first in a series of videos about uh, occult symbols and organizations and the power structure. I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can. Um, I tell you, when I made my Flat Earth video, uh, at first I thought I was just going to make a quick like 10 to 15 minute video. And then once I started going through all the material, uh, a 10 to 15 minute video, uh, of course, you know, if you watched it, ended up being just over a 40 minute video. Uh, just because uh, once I started going through all the facts and evidence, I realized I could just go on and on about that subject. And even after 40 minutes, I still actually left a lot of things out that I should have gotten to. So just first real quick in this video, I'm going to go over some more things about Flat Earth. And oh, here's uh, uh, there's some new footage of people taking aircrafts or drones uh, many, many miles into the atmosphere. Uh, with a camera to record a video where it shows just a completely flat horizon, like the higher you go. So I'll post a link of it in the description. But, okay, just a few things I want to get to is, uh, okay, first of all, in NASA's official photos, it's supposedly satellite uh, pictures of Earth, uh, and the way they've changed over the years with the size of the objects in the photos, like the size of the continents, uh, uh, this right here, um, uh, this is uh, North America. So yeah, first they put out a photo where North America is this big. And then later they put out a photo where all of a sudden it's this big. So yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh, North America got bigger all of a sudden. Oh, another big thing I need to get to is, okay, the distance of the sun from the Earth. Okay, now in the spinning globe solar system model, the sun is supposed to be 93 million miles away. Well, looking at this photo, this shows, okay, there's sunbeams, yeah, these lines of light coming out of the, this area of the clouds. Well, if the sun is supposed to be 93 million miles away, the lines of light wouldn't meet, they wouldn't converge and meet to this point in the middle of the clouds here. Yeah, they should be coming straight. If they have to come from that far away, they should be coming straight at you. Yeah, they wouldn't come 93 million miles towards Earth and then all of a sudden bend at angles that meet in this little point in the clouds right here. So, yeah, that shows the sun is a lot closer. You can measure it by these uh, angles of light. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a couple thousand miles away. Oh, another big thing is the what's called the Coriolis effect. Um, you can watch other videos showing this in more detail, but uh, this has to do with the supposed Earth's spin and how it, it would affect objects leaving Earth's surface. So, like, for example, planes taking off and landing. Okay, so here the, the Earth is supposed to be spinning from west to east. And so this plane, um, okay, so it's trying to land on a runway going from south to north. So... It would have to adjust because the Earth would supposedly spin out from under it as it's trying to land, and so it would have to, the plane would have to adjust to the Earth's motion. It would have to somehow um, adjust itself to that movement, and yeah, planes don't have to do that. There really should be no runways going from north to south, um, but there. Are, I was just at the Manchester Boston International Airport, and they have runways going from north to south, and. Yeah, a lot of airports do, and planes have no problem taking off and landing. Oh, another thing is, um, here in this photo, uh, this shows the the lines of light of the stars moving. Uh, this is actually a time-lapse photo. So, now here, the, uh, the, the stars are moving in this perfect circular motion. Well, the thing is, uh, they say that's from the Earth's spin. But, well, the Earth isn't supposed to be just spinning. It's also supposed to be moving around the sun. And then the sun is supposed to be moving around the, whatever, the Milky Way galaxy. So, with all that movement, you wouldn't get just a perfect circle. Yeah, the stars would have to show movement where, yeah, it would be moving in a line that would be slightly curved and then curve around. Yeah, kind of a spring or slinky shape. So... Yeah, what this shows is it's not the Earth spinning. It's the like the, the objects in the sky, like the stars and the sun and the moon, they move around the Earth. And then, the, yeah, the Earth is stationary. It doesn't spin or move around the sun. Okay. So, 
now if you've been watching a lot of these flat earth videos um you may have noticed um yeah people in the like in the in uh, these flat earth youtube videos in the comment section people have been asking things like okay so you're saying the earth is flat it's not a uh, spinning globe so yeah people ask like okay so why would they make this up or or they ask um like whether it's a flat disc or a spinning globe uh, why does it really matter okay in this video i'm going to be explaining why it literally makes all the difference in the world what reality is okay now now many of you have heard about north korea and what society is like over there and what their leaders do to their citizens like what the citizens are led to believe and what you hear is uh, the citizens believe uh, well it's it's basically like a false reality is set up that well it really benefits the leaders it keeps them in power but it keeps people from realizing the truth and uh, realizing their power and they're no different from the leaders so what you hear is um, over there, their leaders like um, okay, their leader uh, it, it was Kim Jong Il. Now it's Kim Jong Un. But okay, so the citizens believe that yeah, this leader they believe basically he's he is God. Yeah, to their citizens that they're, they're ordered to worship him as God, and if they don't, they'll be considered like unfit for society and like blasphemous. Yeah, so so yeah, the the uh, people of North Korea they believe that. Um, uh, Kim Jong Il, or uh, now Kim Jong Un, yeah, he's thought to be God. He, he's thought to have created the Earth and the whole universe, and it is said that they think he makes the sun rise in the morning and set in the evening. Uh, if you look in their library, every book has his name on it, as if he wrote every book every uh, ever made, and also in people's homes, every book, and also pieces of artwork, um, yeah, like paintings. Uh, written uh, written pieces of music, yeah, they all have his name on it, as if he uh, created everything. Now, people in North Korea have very little communication with the outside world, and a lot of information that would lead them to the truth uh, is kept, it's really suppressed and kept hidden. Now, many people that study history and elements of the power structure, a lot of them compare America to North Korea. Now, that may sound kind of strange, but it's becoming more public knowledge that, okay, so it's been thought that America is this republic or democracy where the citizens choose to elect a leader, like they have public elections where the people decide who's put in office as their leader. Well, this is becoming just common knowledge. That's a complete lie. Now, people that study the actual power structure, okay, there's a, they say, um, there's a saying that, um, to understand it, they say, all roads lead to Rome. So, okay, this chart here kind of shows the power structure and the organizations that are actually running this. So, so okay, so, yeah, to understand the power structure, yeah, that, that saying, all roads lead to Rome, yeah, you can see it here. Um, so, yeah, the, the world uh, power structure, it's actually... It's run by, okay, so there's the royal bloodlines, the financial institutions of London, and then the Vatican and Rome. And here I can show you. Okay, this is, uh, this is the flag of Washington, D.C. And what you see here is, uh, okay, these three stars, these represent the Roman Empire. So, okay, the three stars here, okay, one of the stars is to represent the Vatican and Rome. There's another star to represent Washington, D.C., and there's the last star is to represent London. So, now what this is known is as the three entities of the, uh, or the three capitals of the Roman Empire. Now, the thing all of these have in common, uh, the thing you have to realize is, okay, so Washington, D.C., London, and the Vatican, uh, what they all have in common is they're all their own sovereign entities. They're not under any laws or constitutions of the countries that basically just surround them. And, okay, well, as you know, like the royal family and like the Vatican, uh, they don't have democratically elected leaders. Like they don't have public elections to decide who's the next pope or who's the next uh, king or queen of England. 
And if you study the power structure, you know, uh, all three of them, they control countries' governments through secret societies. Now, in America, you can go back in history, and it's been pretty cons uh, consistent that uh, well, pretty much every U.S. president has been from a secret society. Um, yeah, it's trying to, um, it starts right from the beginning, and up until now okay so the current president Barack Obama he's a Freemason and this new president-elect uh, Donald Trump uh, he's a high-level 33rd degree Freemason uh, this is him at a Jesuit banquet dinner and you see he's with Hillary Clinton uh, this is actually right after the third presidential debate so and you can keep going uh, okay so before Barack Obama uh, it was a uh, George Bush Jr., uh, he, he's a Freemason. He's also out of Skull and Bones. Um, and then before him, Bill Clinton, he was a 33rd degree Freemason. And then Bush Sr., uh, Freemason, also out of Skull and Bones. Um, and then you can keep going before them. Like, uh, yeah, it was Reagan, Carter, uh, Gerald Ford. Yeah, they're all from secret societies. Okay, now these secret societies, now, even if you don't know anything about them, uh, the thing you have to realize is you've definitely been a part of their customs and practices pretty much your whole life. Okay, now, I talked about some of their symbols in my last video. Okay, so, yeah, I talked about these, like, like the uh, pentagram, the square and compass. Um, oh, I also showed, like, the, yeah, there's the um, all-seeing eye in the pyramid or triangle. And here, I'm going to show some some symbols I didn't get to. Yeah, this is uh, this right here. This is actually an occult symbol. Uh, this is it's been called the Star of David. It's also known as the Seal of Solomon. But okay, I also talked about last time. Yeah, these these symbols can be seen in our culture. Like they're on the back of our money. Like this is the one dollar bill, and then you can see here it's got the all seeing eye. Now on the one dollar bill, there are also there are hidden symbols, like this. Uh, Star David or Seal of Solomon, and it spells out the word Mason with uh, these words here. Yeah, the letters. Uh, uh, there, uh, the word Mason is pointed to with this uh, Seal of Solomon. Yeah, you can see it. There's the M A S O N. So yeah, it spells Mason with this uh, Seal of Solomon, and also with the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. And actually, the money used today is part of a central banking system, which comes from, like, Egyptian, Babylonian occult teachings. And actually, our entire system of government is from, like, Greco-Roman occult teachings. Okay, I can show uh, here. Uh, okay, so this is the official bust of George Washington in Washington, D.C. And here you can see on the monument... It even says right here, it says Freemason and President, and it's got the square and compass. <clears throat> now, notice it says, the first thing it says is Freemason. It says that first. So, yeah, this monument is saying, yeah, George, yeah, George Washington, he's, this is to remember him as a Freemason. Uh, oh, and by the way, he was also President. So, yeah, you can see here what's really, what really matters in the power structure. Now, the thing is, um, even though a lot of this is new to you, um, you're brought into this satanic world system early on. It, it really starts from the time you're born. Oh, here, it really starts with your birth certificate. Okay, so here, yeah, this is what a birth certificate looks like. Now, notice it's, it's very similar to certificates that are used for livestock, uh, that are used for, like, agriculture companies. Yeah, so, yeah, this, this certificate would be used for, like, livestock or cattle. Now, it's been said and it's been written about that many world leaders and, like, royalty, they consider the average person to be, like, cattle. They consider them livestock. So, so yeah, this here, yeah, this um, certificate would assign uh, livestock or cattle to an agriculture company. So, okay, so when you're born, you're given your birth certificate and... You can watch other videos about this, and there's like documentaries uh, explaining this in more detail. But okay, so when you're born, you, uh, you get your birth certificate, and what happens is your birth certificate or opens a corporation in your name. Yeah, it declares you to be a corporation. 
Now, I'm going to get into a little etymology here. Uh, yeah, that's uh, etymology. That means the origin of words, or, uh, where words come from. Okay, so so you get your birth certificate. It, it declares you to be part of a corporation. Now, notice the word corporation sounds like the word corpse. Uh, that's basically what it means. A corporation is a dead body. Yeah, so your birth your birth certificate declares you to be a, a a corporation. It declares you a dead body. Yeah, it says you're an object to be making money for the government, and people end up doing that with their jobs, and the government takes out income tax money. So yeah, you get your birth certificate, and then you're um, when you're growing up, you're put into the school system. Now the school system and education is very satanic. Okay, now. So one of the thing, the, the first thing you learn in school is spelling. Yeah, in school you learn how to spell. Now I'm getting get into some more etymology here. Um, okay, so when you learn spelling, um, many of you have heard stories about like wizards and witches and how they cast spells. So that's where that comes from. In school you learn spelling. You learn how to spell. Like say you make people believe something that's not true to be true in their mind using your words. Yeah, it's kind of like magic. You you can make up something out of nothing. Now, also in addition to spelling, you learn grammar. Now the word grammar comes from the word grimoire or grammaire. Now that's uh, in witchcraft. That means a magic book f used for summoning dead spirits or demons. So, now, if you really want to see it, you can look at the ceremonies for school, like for graduating. Yeah, this would be a, a ceremony used, uh, yeah, this, this is like a ceremony for graduating college. And notice everyone wears, like, black robes. Yeah, this black robe design that looks similar to what a, what a priest would wear. But usually a priest would wear a white robe or some other color. Yeah, but... In uh, graduation ceremonies, yeah, people wear, like, red or black. Yeah, it kind of looks like they're, like, a satanic priest. Now, also, okay, so you put your black robe on in the ceremony. And also, when you graduate, you put this this kind of black cube-looking square object on your head. Now, this is a satanic symbol. Okay, now, in masonry, um, the old stonemasons, they, they used to build stone structures. And... The masons would use a square tool as a mortar board when they built like brick structures. Okay, now in Freemasonry, the cube or the square is symbolic of what you put your intent into to build whatever you desire in the world. Now, it, it depends with the different degrees. As I said, with the Freemasonry, there are different levels. Like uh, first and second degree is lower level, and then like 33rd degree is higher level. Um, and if you're not in a secret society like this, you're just considered, like I said, you're considered cattle. You're considered just a pawn to be used in their system. So, okay, so when you put in um, like a graduation ceremony, when you put this square object on your head, you're basically saying uh, you're just a tool to be used for whatever mason, either higher level or just lower level mason to build whatever they want in the world which is sort of a kingdom for them and the members of their society. And that kingdom will be built by slaves that are not in their society. So, yeah, I found this cartoon here. So when you put this square object on your head in the ceremony, you're basically signing yourself up for slavery. So also when you graduate, you're given a diploma. Now, the word diploma comes from the word deplume. That means to, like, strip a bird of its feathers. So... So yeah, when you graduate, you're given a diploma, you're, you're deplumed, you're stripped of your dignity and natural essence. You signed yourself up for slavery. Now, you can also see it, a lot of people join the military, and you can see a lot of satanic symbols. It's in their uniforms and then their the honors they're being given. Yeah, this is an Air Force pilot, and he's been given this honor. Now, here it is. It, it kind of looks like a like a... Templar cross or a Maltese cross. Yeah, that red cross there. But you can also see it in the yeah, the uh, uniforms and their weapons. There's occult symbols like lightning bolts and like skull and crossbones. Kind of like the secret society skull and bones. Now, most people grow up in religion. 
yeah, what they call like organized religion. Really, if you go to any church, um, you should look and see if your your church is what they call a a five hundred one c three church. That means it's it's regulated by the government. Yeah, most churches are government run, and as I've been pointing out, the government is run by satanic secret societies. Yeah, especially like these mega churches. Yeah, these big evangelical churches. Yeah, the, the churches run by like people like uh, Robert Schuller, T.D. Jakes, uh, Wayne Cordero. Yeah, they're either in secret societies or they're control. Uh, yeah, like most churches, they're controlled by them. Yeah, so yeah, most most churches and um, also the New Age movement is controlled by secret societies. Okay, now I've been pointing out their their symbols. Okay, so yeah, I showed the, some of these in my last video. So yeah, there's a like the pentagram, square, and compass. Yeah, the uh, all-seeing eye and the pyramid. I also pointed out some of their there's hand signs. Yeah, you may have seen this. Yeah, this hand sign. It's called the Il Cornudo. Now, I'm going to show some other hand signs. Um, now, many of you have heard about the uh, occult number 666. But there's this uh, hand sign associated with it. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, this kind of okay looking hand sign. Um, but yeah, it kind of resembles like the three sixes, like these three fingers with the circle. So, yeah. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but yeah, there's this uh, occult entity. Uh, this is called uh, Baphomet. So, okay, now I've been pointing out these um, these occult symbols and organizations. Uh, yeah, I've talked about your birth certificate, like the school system, and like the military and uh, churches. But also, I mean, if you grow up in American uh, society and the culture... You can look really just everywhere, and I mean everywhere, anywhere in the culture. It's in movies, music, uh, video games. It's in a lot of corporate logos, like signs, yeah, like buildings and architecture. So, especially if you watch like television, I mean, but you can look at posters, pictures, yeah, video like music videos. But you can see these these symbols that I've been pointing out. You can see them just everywhere. Yeah, if you yeah, in just the in the movies, music, yeah, just everywhere in American culture, yeah, these symbols can be seen just all over the place. You just see these same symbols just over and over again. Okay, what you're seeing here is yeah, so in movies, music, like the a lot of the popular figures yeah, these people in movies and music, like here's Jay-Z. And you can see here he's making like a pyramid shape with his hands and he has his eye in it. So yeah, it's like the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. Yeah, a lot of times they cover one eye. Yeah, they do this pyramid shape. But yeah, you can just see this just over and over again. Yeah, a lot of you have seen this. You maybe didn't know what it means, but I mean, just look at all this. You can't deny this. Yeah, this is just a small fraction of what you can see. A lot of other video makers are pointing this out, and there's other... You can look up yeah, pictures of this. There's probably thousands of them. But now, if you know anything about American pop culture, these celebrities you're seeing, like, these are some of the biggest names in like movies and music. Like here's You can see Michael Jackson, there's Johnny Depp, uh, what's his name, Bono from U2. There's Nicki Minaj, uh, Kesha, there's Rihanna, yeah, Lady Gaga. Yeah, so so yeah, these aren't just like just your just average people in movies and music. These are some of the biggest names, the biggest selling like box office hit stars. Yeah, the biggest names in music. And yeah, you can just see them doing these same symbols. Yeah, there's the Il Cornudo. So yeah, you just see it all over the place. It's on their album covers. Yeah, it's on uh, pictures and magazines and movie posters. Now the thing is, you can't say this is like just accidents or uh, accidental or coincidence, or like they were caught off guard. Now most of these are professional photo shoots, and the photographers tell them how to pose. So yeah, they're being told to show these symbols. Yeah, for a reason. But yeah, you can just see this everywhere. 
<clears throat> yeah, they cover one eye. Yeah, there's Prince. Um, there's Pharrell Williams. Yeah, it's in their music videos sometimes. But yeah, their posters. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah, all of them do these same symbols. Yeah, there's Justin Bieber, Drake. But yeah, there's it's just all over the place. And yeah, people th think a lot of this is new. It's not new at all. Yeah, there's the Beatles doing it. Yeah, the 666, the Il Cornudo. Yeah, there's Michael Jackson when he was a kid. Yeah, there's uh, Steven Tyler. That's uh, Michael Douglas. Okay, so here's a music video. Um, yeah, this guy's wearing like a Baphomet t-shirt. Yeah, he's doing the Il Cornudo. So, yeah, a lot of these uh, celebrities are in secret societies. Oh, and uh, yeah, Disneyland. Um, actually, Walt Disney, um, he was a 33rd degree Freemason. And um, so at Disneyland, there's a Masonic club. Oh, yeah, there's Ka Kanye West. He's wearing like a Baphomet t-shirt. There he's wearing like a Baphomet belt. But, um, and you can see it in movies. Um, yeah, this is Any Given Sunday. It's got an eye in the pyramid. Yeah, here's, um, oh, this is Monsters, Inc. It's got an all-seeing eye. Oh, and um, there's uh, movies that pointed out 9-11 before it happened. Yeah, the 9-11 is an occult number, and it was also an occult ritual. Yeah, so this is from Terminator 2. Yeah, that's a Tomb Raider. Oh, this Simpsons episode, this is from 1997. And yeah, they're talking about 9-11 before it happened. Yeah, see, he's holding up this magazine that says New York. It's got the 9-11. even has the Twin Towers as the 9 as the uh, 11. And yeah, all these movie posters. And like I said, these are some of the biggest movies ever. And they're all using this all-seeing eye symbolism. Yeah, there's Avatar, Godzilla, Chucky. There's Disney movies. And yeah, just... It goes on and on. So yeah, there's a Nickelodeon. They've got the eye in the pyramid. Yeah, the CBS logo. So yeah, it's just all over the place. Yeah, the Google Chrome logo has this 666. So yeah, it's in the Disney logo. Okay, so these symbols can be seen just everywhere in the culture and in society. And yeah, while you don't... You, don't know what they mean yeah most people don't know what they mean they see them over and over again but they don't understand them but they all mean something and yeah symbols are always trying to say something they're always trying to tell you something and in this case with these symbols they're trying to tell you something important it, it's important to know what they mean yeah what what are they trying to tell you so if you want to understand what they mean now the thing about these symbols with the these are from secret societies now the thing about them is they have multiple meanings okay there's now there's basically two kinds of meanings with all of these symbols there's what they call the exoteric meanings and then there's the esoteric meanings okay now the exoteric meanings um they say they're these they're these meanings to the symbols but they're not really the actual meanings they're just kind of outer level meanings. Um, there's usually um, in the exoteric meanings that those are the ones that um, those are the only ones that have multiple meanings. They have just kind of outer level meanings because these secret societies want to keep knowledge a uh, secret. They want to keep the truth be from being realized. So they have just kind of fake meanings because they, like I said, they consider most people to just be like cattle they consider them just pawns in their system so they really just have a lot of fake meanings to confuse the ignorant masses i guess so yeah that's the exoteric meanings now there's also the the esoteric meanings and what the esoteric meanings that means the deepest level meaning the actual meaning of the symbols so okay now what i'm going to do is tell you the meanings of these symbols and what i'm going to do is just cut straight to the chase and get right to the esoteric meanings i'm going to tell you the actual meanings of these symbols yeah all these symbols that i've been showing you now the thing is if you want to know the meanings of these symbols well they pretty much have one basic meaning they have they're trying to tell you one pretty much one concept 
And what they're trying to tell you is the actual structure of the universe. And here, this pretty much explains it. Okay, this is the actual structure of the universe. Okay, so what you have here is, okay, up here you have the sun. That's the sun, well, the sun we see every day, the sun above our head. Yeah, this is the light hole. Now, now this is the earth, and down below under the earth, on the other side of it, there is a black hole. Yeah, this is called the black sun. Now, we can't see this one because it's under, like I said, earth this is a flat, it's a, this flat disk. And so this is under the earth. So, yeah, this is a, like a, one that's been kept secret. So, yeah, we have the black hole and we have the flat earth, the flat disk. And at the center of this flat disk, there is a hole. And now what's going on is, so we have this light hole. This is the sun above our head. And this is the black hole. And this black hole takes in light. You may have heard about black holes and how they suck in light. So, yeah, this black hole is sucking in light. And so now there's two parts to this this uh, black hole. Now on this side it has a hexagram or cube shape, and this hexagram or cube shape object that's what's taking in the light. It like takes in the light from the sun. And then now not only does this black hole take in light, but it also emits light from the top here. There's a oval or eye shaped object. And it shoots out this light towards the Earth. And now since this Earth is a flat disk with this hole at the center, when the black hole, when it shoots out this light towards the Earth, this hole at the center has, the, has this light shooting out from the center of the Earth. So it's like an energy... Yeah, it's, it's actually a green energy shooting out from the center of the Earth. Now, what you have here is, okay, so the sun, yeah, this light hole and this black hole, now they work together. They're shown here as, it looks like they're two separate entities. It looks like it's two separate suns, but they're actually thought of as one. Or they're thought of as two sides to one coin. So... So this is the universe, and one way they use, uh, one phrase they use to describe it, what they say is, it's as above, so below, or as within, so without. Now this energy coming from this black hole, now if you study anything about science, you know really everything is made of energy. Everything is made of like uh, waves of energy uh, there's you know like light waves sound waves vibration and so what these waves look like is this yeah these are known as the sine wave so yeah with waves uh, with these sine waves there's uh, different like frequencies different amplitudes so yeah this would be like low frequency see there's not many waves and then there's like a higher frequency so yeah, there's a lot of waves. And yeah, everything yeah, because everything is made of like atoms and molecules and we now know that even those are all made of little waves of energy. So everything in the universe is made of this energy coming from these two suns. Now, what you have here is it's also known that this top part with the sun above our head, this is known as the divine masculine. And this black hole, this is known as the divine feminine. So, so yeah, it's as above, so below, as, as within, so without. Now, so, what, uh, I, now what I can show you is, going back to the symbols, I can show you how they relate to the structure of the universe. Okay, so you have the pentagram. Now, sometimes pentagrams are like a right-side-up star, and this one is an upside-down star. So that would um, obviously uh, that would symbolize like the the sun above our head. If it's right-side-up, that would be the sun above our head. The upside-down one here 
would be the the black sun yeah because it's under the earth it's like upside down on the other side of the earth and so the all-seeing eye as i said that's the that's on the black sun shooting out the energy towards the earth and it even has here it's got like on this um all seeing eye it looks like it's emitting a light so yeah that's the that's one of the black sun it emits a light or an energy <laughs> now you can really see it on the star david or seal solomon now this is actually made of like a point a triangle pointing up and a triangle pointing down so one is pointing to the divine this is pointing to the divine masculine and this is pointing to the divine feminine so it's as above so below and it's also okay so the 666 so those three sixes those would represent the three parts that i showed you the, okay so there's the sun above our head the black sun underneath us and then the flat earth so yeah it's 666 and it even you can even see it on the star david okay so the star david not only is it these two triangles but notice it's also like three points three pointing up and three pointing down and then there's uh, like a this hexagram shape in the center so and each of these points has two sides so three points with two sides that would be six so six pointing up six pointing down and then a six-sided hexagram in the middle so it would be six as above six so below and six on the flat earth in the center so also the I uh, I showed you this Baphomet entity. Notice there is one hand pointing up, one hand pointing down. So that would be as above, so below. Now, on the Il Cornudo, now there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, yeah, the, uh, El Corn the Il Cornudo is shown a couple different ways. Um, sometimes it's done with the thumb going out. And sometimes it's done with the uh, thumb in. So yeah, you can see here it's got the thumb in, but it's also it's always done with. Okay, so it's got two fingers in, two fingers pointing down, and two fingers pointing up. So that would be the two fingers pointing up. That's as above, and the two fingers pointing down. That's so below, and with the thumb going in or out, that would be as within, so without. So. You can also see it on other symbols like the yin yang. You can see here it's got a light hole above, black hole below. So as above, so below. <laughs>